said, play up my pussy, but don't play up my emotions. If you spend some money, then maybe I just might fuck you. Oh, goddesses. So, I asked you guys on IG if you guys wanted me to make a natural hair video. Um, and here I am. We're doing it. So, let's get right into the video. Disclaimer, I just want to make this clear. What I have done with my hair and what I chose to do with my hair, this may not work for you. We are all different beings. We are all different people. So, try it and see if it works for you, but it may not work for you. I just want to make that clear. We're all different. So, I'm going to go into the number one tip that this is something... I'm going to share with you guys something that really irritates my soul that i've heard time and time again when i have talked to people when it comes to natural hair so what i have heard over over again is when people are like you know i put like you know castor oil in my hair and you know some leave-in conditioner just oil 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 i just put all this oil in my hair my hair breaks off and i don't know why anyway the key to growing your hair is moisture 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 okay now like all jokes aside if you have type 4 hair like me you have to understand our hair is naturally dry you need to put moisture in your hair if you are only using oil or whatever the case is and you're like why isn't my hair growing because your hair is growing at the same pace as it's breaking off moisture is key not oil oil is helpful what it does oil seals the moisture in it's literally a sealant it's like plastic wrap to protect the moisture inside does that make sense i hope that fucking makes sense i really do so if you were type four moisture is key not fucking oil moisture now that i got that out my system like okay so when it comes to moisture like i just said how is it that I get moisture into my hair? Because maybe that is something that you struggle with. I don't know how to get moisture in my hair. Is water enough? Water is not enough. So the way that you can get moisture into your hair is deep conditioning. Okay? Repetition and deep conditioning go together. Okay? You know what I'm saying? For my hair at this point, I leave it in protective styles, as you can see. And I leave it in this protective style for a good two weeks to three weeks, right? When I go to wash my hair, I do a deep condition religiously every single time. The reason to that is because during the two weeks that I do not really nourish my hair, I do not really, I'm, I'm a lazy natural, I don't really moisturize my hair because when I moisturize it like I did this past week and yesterday, when I deep condition my hair overnight and all that stuff and more, I have so much moisture in my hair. So when I go to take out my hair in two weeks from now to three weeks, it's going to be moisturized. I feel how moisturized my hair is. Okay, so that is something that is very, very important. Deep conditioning your hair is what gives it back all its nutrition and nutrients that it was lacking during those two weeks, okay, to three weeks, depending on how long you decide to not wash your hair for. Usually two weeks is what I do, but my hair is getting too long now to the point where I have to um, do it every three weeks. I, it's just too much. So again, deep condition your hair is the key to bringing all that nutrients back to your hair that was lacking for those two weeks, okay? So my next tip is condition, conditioning. So I'm pretty sure if you don't know, I hope you guys do know, but after you deep condition your hair, you go into regularly conditioning your hair. So when I condition my hair, what I do is I do not rinse out all of the conditioner. So at the root of my hair, I, you know, scrub my scalp and make sure I get the conditioner out of my scalp. Then when I go to rinse, cause I have it, I do my hair in sections. This is another thing too. I do my hair in sections and they're in braids or in twists. So when I rinse out the conditioner, I just squinch it. You know what I'm saying? I do it like when it's a lot of conditioner at first, I squeeze it out and then I start squenching it. So I squench it to the point where I'm starting to feel like, okay, the conditioner is like now, like it's still in my hair. There's a little bit left. I feel a little bit like it's still squenchy. Like I can hear the squish of the conditioner and I feel like it's not super like, it's not going to be like creamy, I guess the best way to put it. I still leave 
enough in my hair for my ends and you know my ends of my hair to still have that conditioner so then when I go into my room and get all my products to put the you know my leaving my cream all that stuff and more like there's already conditioner in my hair so it doesn't mean like I don't use my leave-in conditioner spray. I still use that. But say you don't have leave-in conditioner, that is a great leave-in conditioner. But like I said, I double up. I make sure I don't rinse out all of the conditioner because it's still it's my hair is still moisturized. And that is another tip to do. Don't rinse out all the conditioner. Leave some of the conditioner in your hair. So this is another thing when it comes to type 4 hair. I just want to kind of break down with you guys. When it comes to type 4 hair, understand that our hair is like a baby, okay? Like literally, our hair is a baby. I, I don't wear my hair out often and there's a reason to that. The reason I do not leave, leave my hair out often is because my hair loves to hug other strands and love on other strands like a baby. Babies love to love people. That's what our strands do. That is what our hair does. It loves to hug on other strands. You know, when you leave your hair out, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna get, you're gonna get single strand knots, you're gonna get fairy knots, you're gonna get the cobwebs, you know what I'm saying? And my thing is, you have to do protective styling. That is very important when it comes to our hair, protective styles. This is what I do. I Nine times out of ten, you will not see my hair out. If I do have my hair out, it's probably for 2.5 seconds to stun on your bitches, and then I put my hair away. That's what I do because my hair is a child. <laughs> I have to protect it as as much as I can. So I wear styles like these and keep it there. So next I'm going to be moving on to heat, no heat. Which one? You guys, I know a lot of people in the natural hair community, like I, I feel like they frown upon heat. I'm going to really be honest with you. It really depends on you. And I'll break down if you are someone that can use heat and if you should not use heat. That's what I'm going to do. Someone, if your hair is breaking off, do not use heat. If you struggle with growing your hair out, do not use heat. But if you are someone that's like, well, I, I don't want to use heat, but I still want my hair to be like blown out or whatever. You're going to have to find a different way. And here's a tip. So there was a point in time where for a year I did not blow out my hair. I did not use heat. How did I stretch out my hair? So I used many 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 different tactics so one of the tactics that I did was the banding method I would grab my hair and put it in bands to stretch it so I didn't have to use a blow dryer and then by the next day my hair was stretched another thing that I would do after I would wash my hair I would put them in single braids like I had a lot of single braids in my hair and when I would go to sleep I would wake up the next day and my hair would be pretty dry it would because of all the single ones my hair dried quicker in singles than in like something like this if i braided my hair like this it would take like four days for it to dry so braiding my hair in singles it dried pretty much overnight and then once it dried i rebraided it to stretch it out even further and then rebraided it again to stretch it out even further you know what i'm saying and by that point my hair was stretched you know what i'm saying and one of the things if, if you are a person as well that likes to wear their hair out I would suggest if you do do the braid uh, of the braiding um, stretching method, I would say do not fluff it out. Leave it in that curl pattern because then it would one be easy for you to just braid it back, and on top of that, your curls and your hair is like stuck in that um, that curl pattern. It's not really gonna hug on any of the curls because it's stuck in that pattern. So that's my suggestion to you guys. So if you are a person that can use heat, you are someone that's similar to me. You know, I was natural for like two years by this point. I liked wearing my hair bone out because it just looked better and it looked nicer and it was easier for me to do stuff with my hair. So I would blow my hair out every And by the way, I never got heat damage at all. I never had any heat damage. I never had any problems. So this is what I did during the time of blowing out my hair. I kept it on medium heat. I used a lot of heat protectant. Okay. I did not use it on the highest heat, I used it on the medium heat, but as well as I went back and forth from medium to cool, okay? Yes, it may have taken longer for my hair to like blow out my hair, but at the end of the day, my hair still got blown out. You know what I'm saying? And I never had heat damage. So for me personally, I don't necessarily like, oh, don't use heat. If you feel comfortable of using heat, you can. So my hair was like here, and by the end of that year, my hair was to my collarbone. 
And like I said, I protected the shit out of my hair during that time. So if you are someone that's similar to me and you are like have thick hair and you know what you're doing, use heat. But like I said, medium to cool and a lot of heat protected. Okay guys, and this is my last tip. My last tip to you guys is experiment. Experiment, experiment, experiment. So I have a lot of experiments that I did that some were fails and some were great experience. So I'm gonna tell you guys one of the weirdest experience, like experiments that I did, but it was interesting. Heard of the egg and grapeseed oil overnight growth, overnight growth. I remember finding this video in college and I was like obsessed with YouTube hair, natural hair videos to growing out my hair. It was insane. I was addicted. I remember finding this video that was like overnight growth and it was like egg, literally egg and rapeseed oil and you would have to <laughs> lean your head over the bed and massage your scalp or maybe I added that into it. And I remember when I did do it and I woke up the next morning and rinsed it out, my hair did grow but I think it was just from the elasticity. It didn't really grow overnight and made you think your hair grow, grew overnight. But my thing is, I feel that it still did help my hair though, because it felt so moisturized and just, it was great, you know what I'm saying? So that was one of the weird experiments I did, but nothing bad, or un, like it didn't do anything bad to my hair. The one experiment that I will tell you guys, please do not do this. So I was in college and I remember doing henna and I remember watching this video of this girl, cause I'm, I'm a very lazy natural. And I was like, can I leave this in my hair overnight? I remember this one girl who was black, but we did not have the same texture hair. She had a very looser color uh, curl pattern than me. Did it and the next day her hair was fine. So I was like, oh, whatever, I'll do too. I did that. I woke up the next day, my hair felt fine, but I will never forget there was a piece of my hair right here and it, like back here that broke off where I looked, it was like so short. And my hair was like maybe to here, I wanna say like to my collarbone. So it broke off and it was like, my hair was like that long and it looked like I had a bald spot. And I was so fucking devastated. But that was my dumbass fault. I did that to myself. So my thing is, like I said, you're going to experiment and there's going to be things that are going to be great and things that when it comes to a journey point blank period, you're going to have to experiment. Take the advice and tips that I've given you and apply it and you will see results. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, experiment on your own. There were many things that I still do to this day that I use on my hair. Aloe is something that I use on my hair and not only on my hair, on my face too. I still use aloe on my face and as you can see, do you see any really blemishes or anything? No, because natural products, DIYs are something that is really good. Cause one, you just go to the store and buy it and you don't have to buy like a can for $15 of concoctions of stuff, I don't know. But sometimes just using natural products on your hair is better, like avocado, banana, um, carrots. I don't know. There's so many different recipes out there that you can use on your hair. I would recommend, again, experiment as much as you can. Have fun with it. So I'm just going to end this video with saying experiment, have fun, apply these tips, and let me know in the comments below if it, it definitely is working for you guys, okay? like check in like let me know in a month okay if you see a difference because i'm telling you the things that i'm giving to you i have been natural for six years so these are things that have worked for me and i really do hope it works for you put in the work and you'll get results love you guys and talk to you guys soon bye